first of all, start by thanking you for sticking with me as uh, we're uh, experimenting with these short stories. Uh, you know, we've been going through the story of, of Isaiah, seeing this vision of God. And, and, and before we even get started, when you think of altar, is, is this what you think about? I mean, this is what I grew up with, uh, you know, do this in remembrance of me. And, uh, and, and these are awesome. They have a lot of significance. But I just want you to think as we get in the story, is this what you picture in the story that we're going to be telling today? Well, just to give you a little background, for those of you who have been with us before, you'll have an idea. But for others, if you're just joining with us, uh, Isaiah has seen a vision of God in the year that uh, his, the king that's been king for 52 years has died. And, and he has seen this incredible vision of God. He's seen these creatures called seraphim that were praising God, seen the results of that worship. Uh, and his response was that he was doomed and he recognized that he was a man of unclean lips and he lived among a people of unclean lips. And, uh, and so here is where our story starts. And, and so an, a seraph flew to me and he had in his hands uh, a coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. And with that coal, he touched my lips and he said, because this has touched your lips, your iniquity is taken away and your sin is atoned for. And then I heard the voice of the Lord say, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Now I'm, I'm, I'm curious in that story, I mean, what do you think it might've been like to be Isaiah and suddenly You've been comparing yourself to all these other people and now you see the holiness of God and you recognize not only the sin of those around you, but you recognize the sin in your own life. I mean, what might that have been like for him emotionally? Yeah, I, I, I think obviously there was a, a lot of conviction there, even though this guy was a prophet of God, right? Well, we see, we see this this seraph, this angelic being, and we don't know a whole lot about them, but uh, he, he comes and he touches Isaiah's lips. Now remember the confession Isaiah made just before this story. I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. So I wonder what might we learn about the significance of the, of the lips from the fact that, first of all, Isaiah recognized that was a spiritual issue. And, and secondly, that is what this angelic being chose to touch with the coal from the altar. Might we learn anything about the significance of our mouths? Or, or did Isaiah learn anything about the significance of his mouth? Hmm. I, I wonder if, if words have power. You know, earlier on, we saw the worship of these, uh, of, of these seraphim. It caused the foundation of the temple to shake and the room was filled with smoke. So what do we learn about the power of words through what transpires in this story? Hmm. And, and it's interesting what this angelic being says. Not only does he say, once, you know, the coal has touched Isaiah's lips, uh, not only does he say your iniquity is taken away and your sin is atoned for. I mean, having both those things mentioned when it comes to, to sin, I mean, do, do you, what do you see there? Is it like a completeness maybe? I don't know. What, what about you? I'd, I'd love to hear in the comments what, what some of you see because I've not thought about that before. In, in this story. Hmm. You know, it's curious. Isaiah saw his need by his confession. Uh, do you see that God was ready to meet his need? I, I wonder, do you see any responsibility on God's part as far as revealing Isaiah's need to him? Might we learn anything about the holiness of God and and how it affects men when we truly focus, when we truly see his holiness. Hmm. Yeah. 
Well, I wonder, you know, in the, in the story, we, we saw the power of words. We saw the power of the lips. We saw the need for those to be redeemed, for lack of a better term. I wonder today, do words still have power? And I'm not just talking about insulting people or uh, making somebody mad, but well, in spiritually speaking, do words still have power? I mean, what, what might that look like? You know, when, when we profess things with our mouth, you know, and please, don't, don't get me wrong, I don't want to be one of these name it, I don't want you to confuse me with one of these name it, claim it guys, but I, I'm just curious, uh, today do words still have power in the spiritual way? You know, I wonder as, as we pray, I mean, a lot, a lot of us pray silently. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I hear all the time, you have a silent prayer request. And, and I understand that. I understand there are times that there are things that are so personal and so private or other people are involved and you don't want to let, you know, you don't want to, to embarrass them or, or put them out there in any way. But I wonder, I wonder if we might, need to be more vocal in speaking out the things that we're taking before the Lord. I wonder if we might need to be more thoughtful in, uh, in the things we say. You know, I, 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 can't, I can only think right now, uh, as, as this video is being made, we're about three or four weeks from the election, and man, I can't hardly get on social media right now because everybody is just flaming everybody else, right? Uh, and and just breaks it breaks my heart uh, because even even pastors I see pastors taking one position or another and and they're belittling a position and they're not even thinking about the fact that they have to minister to people on both sides of the political equation. I mean, today, should we be cautious about what we do and don't say on media? Hmm. So here's an altar. Is this the altar you see in this story? Uh, I wonder, just a closing thought. I mean, how, how might we honor the altars in our lives today on an ongoing basis? How might we appreciate them? Well, this story is in Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, I believe this was verse 6 or 7. I'm not sure about that. But uh, I would love to, if you think of some things maybe that we didn't even discover or that we didn't even talk about in our story, I would love for you to put it in the comments down below. And, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, we're really trying to build up uh, or, or my, my YouTube channel so that we can get some stories out there. We're going to be experimenting with some things. You can already tell we're experimenting with lights and some of those things. And, and I can guarantee you one thing. I'm going to get a lot of that wrong. And that's okay. Uh, you have to make mistakes in order to learn, right? But I appreciate your prayers. Appreciate your support. And until the next time, uh, keep telling those Bible stories. <laughs>